Well, hello and welcome to a special edition of Financial Learning. On today's video, we're going to take a look at two HPC AI companies and do a head-to-head -head comparison. I'm talking about Core Weave and White Fiber. White Fiber is, of course, a fully owned subsidiary of BTBT. They are looking to do a spinoff IPO later this year, but for now, they are fully owned by BTBT. We're going to be comparing things such as how they are currently scaling, what their footprint does look like, and what that pipeline of future capacity looks like. We're then going to take a look at their overall infrastructure and some of the redundancies that they do have built in place. And we're going to take a look at their GPU chips and some of the GPU clusters and other technological innovation that they have. Finally, we're going to take a look at their finances to see just how they are using their money and capital in order to scale. And with all that, we're then going to give a final conclusion as to how these two companies do differentiate amongst each other. And if you're looking to invest, should you invest in one, both, or neither? So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, in this first section, we will be comparing the scale and footprint of these two companies. So let's just jump right into it. All right, and jumping right in, we're gonna start with CoreWeave. On the left, you can see they have two co-locations here in Spain with about 40 megawatts of data center capability, and then three locations between the UK and Finland with about 100 megawatts of capability. Then 28 total data centers here in the United States with about 280 megawatts of total database capability. Now, if you were to add all of the megawatts up right here, you're going to get 420 megawatts. Now, in terms of contracted power, if they were to continue to scale out these specific data centers, they could reach up to 1.6 gigawatts. So pretty big, pretty good size scale for CoreWeave, and they will be continuing to scale up as they continue to get more and more uh, letters of intent from various customers. They are a hyperscaler type of business. Now, in terms of their co-location integration, they are pretty limited, mostly just cloud native activities. So we'll take a look now at BTBT White Fiber. So you can see here, starting with that flagship location here in Montreal, their MTL1, it's a 65,000 square foot data center, and it's about four megawatts of total HPC AI support. After that was their MTL2 location for 160,000 square feet. And this again is in Montreal and it is a five megawatt database. Now the third location, this was recently announced, this is MTL3 and it's a 202,000 square foot data center in Quebec, Canada for a total of five megawatts. So just in Canada, there's about 14 total megawatts. Now they did purchase Enovum and that pipeline gets them about 300 megawatts total. So if they were to continue to scale these current locations, and then acquire some of the other locations that Enovum did have in their pipeline before they were purchased by BTBT, you would see they'd have a total of 300 to build out there in Canada. Now, moving down, you can see the North Carolina. This is a flagship for the United States. This location is a 1 million square foot location once it's fully built out. And this data center will be able to support 24 megawatts of HPC AI. Now, there's a total of 99 megawatts that is under the capacity agreement with Duke Energy. And if you look at the infrastructure, actually able to build out a total of 200 megawatts at this one location. So they would have to get some extensions on power contracts from Duke, but they do have the capability of hitting 200 megawatts at this one location. Now, if you were to add those Canadian sites and as well as the pipeline, and this North Carolina location, you can see that they are at about a half a gigawatt, 500 megawatts of HPC AI support. So they are not that big yet, but they do have the potential to scale up to that amount. And then you can see here from a co-location standpoint, they have a deep integration with private racks. And they talk about that when they're going to support this North Carolina location once it's built out and then also in the Montreal locations. So co-location is a big portion of the revenue stream here for white fiber. Again, I will call them white fiber from here on out. All right, this next section here, we're gonna talk about the power infrastructure and redundancy. We're gonna take a look at some of their latencies as well as just how are they generating the power needed? 
Are they looking at it from a low carbon footprint? Are they looking at it from a renewable side of the industry? And then also, what type of redundancies do they have in the event that they have any kind of power outages? How are they able to back up and continue running their databases? As that is very important and critical for an HPC AI type of data center. All right, we'll start with CoreWeave again. On the left, you can see they have 100% renewable energy in Spain for that 15 megawatts. And because of that, they are considered carbon neutral. They also have waterless cooling data centers there in Spain. Now, on top of that, from a low latency standpoint, they do have sub one millisecond latency in their New York City locations. And then they do have an infinity band network connecting their GPU clusters with ultra low latency. And then looking at white fiber, you can see at their MTL1 site, they do use hydroelectric power. And from a redundancy standpoint, they do have two in electrical, two in diesel generators, and two in UPS. So they have various ways that they're able to keep the facility up and running in the event they have any type of power disruptors. And then from a latency standpoint, they have 3.2 terabytes per second GPU fabric interconnect ensuring ultra fast multi GPU scaling with near zero latency. So again, that is their claim on latency. They are also extremely low. So again, those are both excellent latency claims between these two companies. That is what you're looking for in terms of data centers. Next up is going to be their GPU tech and their cluster innovation. So let's jump straight into this. Starting again for CoreWeave, we can see here that they were the first to deploy NVIDIA's GB300 chips with this NVL72 housed within the Dell's integrated rack scale system. So again, they did partner with both NVIDIA and Dell. And here's another thing I like, and this is their ML performance training, the 5.0 run. They used a cluster of 2,496 NVIDIA GB200 Blackwell GPUs, and it actually ranked them a platinum tier from a cluster max ranking. So that is a very good thing to have on their resume here from an HPC AI data center. And then the last thing, ease of use of their GPU attachments. They do have one click for their virtual machines. They have containers and then they also have bare metal. So they have various ways that they're able to attach their GPUs. And then the BTBT white fiber, they have their NVIDIA B200s and GB200 GPU clusters. So not quite the GB300 like we saw with CoreWeave, but they do have some good chips here. And they also have another company besides NVIDIA. They use Cerebra's Water Wafer Scale Engine 3. They call it the WSE3. And this does boast 4 trillion transistors and 900,000 AI cores alongside a 44 gigabyte on-chip SRAM. So pretty powerful type of innovation and technology here with BTBT and with this Cerebrus company. And then in terms of their ease of use for their GPU attachments, they do have pool-based selection with bursts or reserved modes. So a couple different options there for how these customers can attach to their GPUs. And as an investor, it's nice to see the bells and whistles. And of course, that's important to see what type of demand it will have and continue to have for the market. But financing is a very important thing. You want to make sure that the company is not taking on too much debt and that they are able to scale appropriately and start to see a return on that investment. So let's now compare the two companies in terms of financing. Starting again with CoreWeave, they are pursuing about $23 billion in 2025 from a CapEx standpoint, and that is to support them scaling globally. This CapEx is going to be backed by debt equity and major partners like Dell and NVIDIA. So they are taking on quite a lot of debt in order for them to scale up. And again, I already mentioned once, they are the hyperscaler when you're looking at these two different business units. And then historically, they have been financed with large facilities of a $650 million credit line in 2024. And their IPO actually let them raise $1.5 billion in March. And then there was another $12 billion of open AI contracts, plus a $350 million investment. So they were able to get some partnerships between Dell, NVIDIA, and also with open AI in order for them to be able to get some additional funding up front to help them scale. And then they did take advantage of the IPO from a equity standpoint and this credit line as well. So they did use various instruments in order to help finance their scaling. And then the last thing I wanna mention 
in terms of hyperscaling, they do offer competitive pricing, which they are about 20 to 50% below other hyperscalers. So that actually does make them more attractive for various customers that are looking to be able to scale their data centers. And then looking at BTBT slash white fiber, they actually had a $60 million credit line and that was a dedicated non-recourse financing for their data center expansion. What's nice about that is it was non-dilutive and they got pretty favorable uh, percent in terms of interest. And then the NC1 campus, which they did acquire for $45 million. This was a cash non-dilutive deal. And when they acquired it, I'm talking about mostly property here. Um, now, this deal does have them able to scale with power agreements, and it does reflect their ability to vertically integrate their ownership and capital efficiency. So again, they are getting a lot of this themselves with various cash offerings, and they're not having to share some of the profit and revenue with various partners like Core Reef does. And with all those features being reviewed, I want to give you the bottom line between these two companies. And then really, it's going to be your choice as an investor if you want to invest in one, both, or neither at all. Starting with Core Weave, you can see here that they do remain the bold frontier. So if you think about it from a hyperscaling standpoint, they are a global entity with a pretty significant amount of power already running in their various data centers. And they are pioneering the next gen GPU tech. We already saw that with the latest NVIDIA GB300. And they are pushing the global scale across various continents, not just here in the North American continent. And then they have been backed by deep pocketed financial maneuvers. So I'm talking about Dell, talking about NVIDIA. So they are working with various partners in order for them to be able to hyperscale their business. And then their rollout of that Blackwell Ultra chip is not only impressive, but it did set a new record in terms of this platinum. And this was for that ML performance result. And it confirms that they're not just catching up, but that they're leading. So again, if you're looking for an ultra competitive hyperscaling business, if you think HPC AI is just starting out and we will see a significant demand in the years to come, or we may be your opportunity for investment. And now let's compare BTBT and White Fiber. So again, they take a more measured but potent approach. So because of that, they're not risking a large amount of debt offering up front. They don't have various customers that they are now going to have to rely on for these different contracts and share in that revenue. Instead, they are doing everything they can to be able to acquire these various HBC AI businesses, such as the Innovum, and then they are scaling it themselves. So it's a little bit of a slower pace. However, there's less risk in my opinion because they already have various power contracts under their belt and they are focused on deployments with robust financing, ownership control, and some tier three reliability in terms of data centers. And then they have flexible GPUs as a service offering. So they may not have the fastest GPU chips but depending on what the customer is looking for, this may be suitable so they don't have to pay such a premium to be able to afford those higher technological advanced chips, which will come at a premium for the customers. And then this would be ideal for customers that want high density HPC without the hyperscaler ties. So if they don't want to have to worry about their specific vendor going into an extreme amount of debt from hyperscaling, then white fiber slash BTBT may be the business of choice. So again, as an investor, if you're a little uncertain of just how much further we will see on the HPC AI scaling, and you don't like companies leveraging a massive amount of debt and having to really dig themselves out, then white fiber may be the investment choice of yours. However, if you feel that these companies are already trading at a significant premium, and if you know that CoreWeave has already forexed in recent trading periods, then you may consider not investing in either companies. Really, the choice is yours as the investor. Just wanted to share some of my opinion when comparing these two companies. All right, and that about wraps up for me. I hope you enjoyed this quick comparison of both CoreWeave and White Fiber. We took a look at some various features 
that I think are very critical if you're looking to invest into one of these HPC AI data center type companies. And if you did like this video, consider giving it a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and drop some comments. Did I miss anything? Did I leave anything out when covering Core Weave and White Fiber? If I did, shoot me a message. I don't mind making a second addition to this comparison. Would love to hear from you all. But with all that said, hope you all have a great rest of your day. Keep calm, hash on, and see you on the next one.